Hello everyone, welcome to Speedway Motors Tech Talk. My name is Joe and today we're here to talk about rear axle disc brake kits and in particular, rear axle disc brake kits that use a weld-on caliper bracket. Uh, we have a huge variety of kits that bolt on to various axles with various diameter brakes, various style calipers, but sometimes either your application or your budget is gonna dictate that you use a weld-on kit. So today we're gonna to walk you through a few steps that'll kind of help you with that process because it is a little bit different if you're used to working with a, a bolt-on kit. Today we happen to be working with our three-inch backspace emergency brake weld-on rear disc kit. What we're gonna talk about is going to apply to just about any weld-on disc kit, but there are a few things that are specific to this kit that we'll get into as well. It's called a three-inch backspace kit because of the backspace on the hat. You'll want to look at your application and determine the best backspacing to position the rotor and the caliper and the bracket where you want them to be on your housing. And the first thing that we're going to do here is kind of pre-assemble these components before we go to our housing and start mocking everything up. The first thing we're going to do is assemble the hat to the rotor. And the obvious question is, does the hat go this way on the rotor or does it go this way? And the answer is going to depend on the kit that you have. If you have a kit with a, a slotted rotor, or if you have a kit with an angled or a curved vein rotor, then it's gonna be directional, and that's gonna kinda dictate the way that you install this. But in this case, this is a straight vein rotor with no slots on the side of it, so we can assemble it whichever way we want to. And the answer to that question then is, again, which way is gonna be best for your application? We're going to assemble ours with the hat on the, the flat side of the rotor, and what that's gonna do is offset the rotor just a little bit more in towards the center of the car, and that will allow a little bit better access to the caliper for bleeding and such with the wheels on, and it will also allow a little bit more clearance to the wheel just in case we need it. Now keep in mind at this point, we're just mocking everything up to allow us to get the caliper bracket where we want it to be. Final assembly will look a lot different, and we'll show you that process as well. We're gonna use these cap screws that come with the kit, but instead of using these locking nuts that, that really are kind of a one-time use thing, for mocking it up, we're gonna use a non-locking nut. And we'll just put these through the rotor like so. And we're just gonna use three of them because that will be plenty sufficient for, what we're, for our mock-up phase here. With our rotor and hat mocked up, we're gonna move on and assemble the caliper to the bracket. These come with the slide bolts installed, so we're gonna take the slide bolts out, take the pad off, might make it easier to navigate, and then the bracket will go on like so. Pay attention to the orientation of the bracket. Sometimes it's gonna matter, sometimes it, it won't, depending on the kit that you have. In our case, it doesn't. those snugged up, we're ready to get our nine inch housing over here and get everything mocked up on the axle itself. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is put the, the rotor on the, the axle here. And obviously, this is something that we're still mocking up for another project. So this is gonna look different if you have an axle that's already in service. You're already gonna have studs in your, your axle and it's, it's gonna be, that part of the process will be a little different. So we're just gonna loosely assemble these, this with these studs in here, just enough to kind of hold this square and allow us to uh, mock up this caliper bracket. The one thing that's really important, uh, regardless of where you're at with, uh, with one of these projects, anytime you're changing over to a new brake kit using a new hat, make sure that everything is happy with the axle flange relative to the hat. In other words, you don't want this thing to be a really tight fit in here and not seat snugly and flat against this outer surface. You wanna make sure that the, in, the outside diameter of this axle is, is less than the inside diameter of the hat by a good margin to allow this to sit flush the way that you want it to. Also pay attention to the register here and make sure that you're not hanging up on that register. That can also, that can also cause a problem. What you want to end up with here before you position this caliper bracket is you want to have this rotor assembled as squarely as possible onto the, onto the axle. I'm 
just a couple couple studs are going to get us where we want to go. I am going to use under the lug nuts. I'm going to use flat washers because that will also help square everything up. And then the lug nut, rather than putting the cone side down, I'm going to put the flat side down on this open face lug nut, and that will also allow the the hat to be clamped as squarely as possible to the axle. up a little bit and all throughout this process this is just one of those things where you want to make sure that you're stopping and sort of looking at the way that everything is oriented and making sure that it's all coming together the way that you want it to you know make sure that you don't have this thing on here somehow crooked or or whatever there's lots of ways that you can sort of incorrectly assemble this and when you weld that caliper bracket on you're definitely going to want that in the right place. So just be extra careful that you're you're got everything the way that you want it before you do any welding. So we've got this assembled here. Everything seems pretty flush and pretty true. And so our next step is to mock the caliper and the bracket assembly up and kind of make sure that that all looks the way we want it to. Before we get to the point that we're actually going to kind of shim this and center it before we weld the bracket on, I'm just going to slide this assembly over and just kind of get a quick look and make sure that everything is oriented the way that we want it to be and that everything fits and that there aren't any, you know, brackets on the axle in the way of the, the caliper bracket or, or anything else that would present a problem before we move on down the road. So it seems like everything's going to be pretty happy here. One thing that's going to be really, really critical to this process is that the metal on the bracket and the metal on the axle housing be very clean before you weld it. You know, that goes without saying you wanna weld on clean metal. This is a super critical weld. Obviously, this is the thing that stops your car. So every precaution that you can take to make sure that it's the best weld that it can be is, is gonna be important. So in our case, we've already kind of cleaned up this axle a little bit. In your case, if you have paint or rust or something on the axle housing, this would be a good time to kind of roughly mark the area where the bracket's gonna sit and then pull it back apart and grind the paint off. We're even gonna go so far as to grind this zinc coating off of this bracket so that we're down to bare steel so we're not pulling that, that coating into our weld. We've ground the zinc coating off of our bracket and we've reassembled it to the caliper. And now's the part where we're gonna kind of assemble it for the last time before we tack on the caliper bracket. And obviously this is a sliding caliper, so you wanna make sure that it's centered before you weld the bracket on. You don't wanna weld the bracket on with it all the way one way or all the way the other way. And there are, there are lots of ways to, to do this. Um, some people will actually put air pressure, hydraulic pressure to the, to the caliper and squeeze it and weld the bracket on where it lands there. The way that I always like to do it is to just kind of use some shims and make sure that you're shimming it the same on both sides. And you can use anything, you know, you can use drops you have laying around the shop, you can use paint sticks. Just make sure that what you're using is clean so that it doesn't get the friction surface dirty and also make sure that it's that it's straight and true you know you don't want to have something that's wedge shaped that's going to cock the the caliper on there so we'll just assemble this with uh, got a paint stick and a piece of 40 thou aluminum and that's going to work out just about right to get this centered the way that we want it to be centered Just make sure you have the same thing going on on both sides because otherwise you're going to be off center and kind of defeat the purpose of what you're doing here. Okay, that worked out just about perfect. Okay, and so now, you know, the piston is compressed all the way. This pad is out all the way against the caliper. Also make sure that there's no space between the caliper and the bracket here. You can really kind of kind of get screwed up if this, if the little slider bushing in there is is not centered, uh, and you'll have everything will be kind of at an angle. So make sure that that's that that's pressed up tight there. Okay, so now that we've got it centered over the rotor, the next thing is to determine the angle that it's gonna that it's gonna fall relative to the axle housing. And this is one of those things where some kits are gonna allow you some latitude. This particular kit, being an emergency brake kit, wants them to be 
angled back towards the back of the axle at you know approximately a 45 degree angle. We have already done the other side. We already did this process and tacked the bracket on the other side. So in this case, we're just gonna match this side to that one. We're gonna use this jack stand to kind of hold, hold everything where we want it to be before we, before we start welding. All right, we're gonna use our little magnetic digital angle finder to check the angle that this bracket is at. So 61.6 degrees. And then we're gonna duplicate that angle on this bracket, pretty close. Hey, there it is, 61.6. Okay, so this is more or less in position now, ready for us to tack. We're just gonna take one last sort of check with the square, and make sure that it's, make sure that it's squared to the axle housing. Take one last, look and make sure there aren't any gaps or anything that looks funky. Everything appears to be just the way that we want it. It's set down flush against the axle tube. I think we're ready to tack it. All right, just a couple tacks will do it. It's just gotta make it from here to the welding table. We're gonna disassemble this before we weld it to give us access all the way around this bracket to fully weld it. And again, I can't emphasize enough, make sure that you, you weld it well. Um, you know, if you don't feel comfortable or if you don't feel comfortable with your equipment, take it to somebody and have them do it. Uh, this is something that's stopping your car. So, so make sure that you have a good weld on it. And also always be careful when you're welding on an axle housing. If you build up too much heat, you can actually bend the housing. It's a little bit less of an issue out here at the end, but uh, just keep that in mind. Maybe stop after you've, you've made a pass and, and let it cool before you, you finish welding. So we're gonna take this over to the fab table, weld it up, and then we'll be ready for reassembly. All right, we've got our caliper bracket welded on. We've painted the housing. We're ready to move on to final assembly. We don't have a third member installed just for the sake of the video, it's easier to move stuff around. We are going to assemble our rotor to the hat using the provided bolts and lock nuts. And we're also gonna use a little Loctite. This is a situation where you don't want any of these bolts to come loose. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that first. The bolts installed, I'm gonna get out the torque wrench and torque these down to 37 foot-pounds. All right, we're gonna install our rotor assembly. We'll just hold it on for now with a couple lug nuts. Before you put this into service, it's a good idea to, to clean, clean the friction surfaces with a little bit of brake clean. All right, next we're going to install the caliper. And make sure you have the, the correct side caliper with the bleeder pointing up, which we do. and slide bolts. All right, that pretty much does it. Obviously, we'll repeat that process on the other side. Hopefully that answers some of your questions about doing a weld-on caliper bracket, and thank you for watching.